Welcome to this episode of The Aquarist Sedge, a podcast for home aquarists just like you. Learn more about how to keep a thriving aquarium and discover ideas and tips to give your aquarium the edge. And now, over to our host, Arthur Preston. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at one of the hobby's most addictive and fascinating activities, breeding guppies. Now, at face value, that might seem like a non-starter. Everybody breeds guppies, right? Whether you're seven years old or 87 or 97, you've bred guppies, sometimes without even wanting to because, well, a male and a female guppy in the same tank and nature takes its course. But we also know that we can breed certain characteristics into our guppies. We can secure certain colors and certain tail shapes and so forth in our guppies by breeding in a particular way. And in order for us to do that, we need to have some basic understanding of guppy genetics. And so we don't want to let the word genetics scare us off. And so I'm going to break this down today in plain practical language. So whether you are brand new to guppies or thinking about breeding your own strain, you're going to come away with tools that you can actually use. Grab your cup of tea and let's spend the next 10 to 13 minutes untangling what guppy genetics actually means. Let's start with the very basic idea of guppies. These are colorful, active, live-bearing fish. This means that they give birth to live, free-swimming young, or fry. They don't lay eggs. And they're famous worldwide for their wide variety of colors and patterns and tail shapes. And it's those traits that are passed down through genetic inheritance, which basically means that is a set of instructions from the parent's DNA. And in order to understand these genes, there are certain terms we need to know. First one being dominant gene. This is a trait that will show up in the offspring, even if only one parent carries it. And then there's a the recessive gene, which is a trait that only shows up if both parents carry it, like blue eyes in humans. So for example, a snake skin pattern is often dominant, whereas the albino gene is always recessive. Now, interestingly, guppies have 23 pairs of chromosomes, X and Y chromosomes, just like humans. And some of their color traits are linked to the sex of the fish, meaning that they're carried on the X or the Y chromosome. And this is one reason why males are often more colorful. Many of those flashy colorful genes live on the Y chromosome and only show up in males. Something to bear in mind is that females can carry a color gene without showing it. So when you see a breeding female and you look at her and go, wow, that's quite a dull, boring looking grayish fish. Don't touch the book by its cover. Her genes may be hiding a colorful surprise. She may be a champion breeder and her offspring may be incredibly stunning fish. Another thing to think about is that sometimes you can breed two pretty guppies and end up with a tank full of dull brownish gray young. And that's likely the work of recessive genetics. Let's take a look then at the idea of the word strain. You've probably heard this word you know, thrown about as people talk about guppy strains and pure strains. What is a guppy strain? Well, a strain is a genetically consistent line of guppies that reliably produce the same traits generation after generation. That will include things such as the color pattern, their tail shape, their body color, their size, and sometimes even their behavior or their growth rate. And to maintain a strain, breeders use line breeding, which means selectively pairing fish within the same line to preserve those traits, sort of like maintaining your family tree. In breeding, which is breeding close relatives such as brother and sister can help to lock in certain traits, whereas outcrossing means to introduce an unrelated fish to add fresh genes and prevent weakness to your breeding pool. There's also something which you may have heard called line breeding, and this is a carefully controlled inbreeding with occasional outcrossing. Now, if you don't manage the balance of breeding such as this, in terms of line breeding, you can get something called inbreeding depression. And this is a weakening of the, 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 the strain itself. And fish may end up with crooked spines, deformities, or just become a lot more vulnerable to disease. I actually have a podcast episode about this. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll link it in the top right. If you are listening on a podcast app, Please, when you finish listening to this episode, go and find the episode on 
um, why, or asking the question, are our guppies getting weaker? And um, I'll dig into that a little bit more. So how then do you start your own breeding program? Well, let's say you're ready to go from casual guppy parent to a serious breeder. How do you go about that? Well, here's some ideas. First thing you want to do is to set a goal. Pick one primary trait that you want to focus on. Not five, not three, not two. Choose one. If you choose to try and breed for more than one character trait, you'll end up becoming overwhelmed and your results will be unpredictable. So choose what you want to focus on. It could be color, it could be the pattern, it could be the tail shape. Then you want to choose a healthy trio of guppies. That would be one female and two males from the same strain. And this will give you more fry while also keeping the gene pool consistent. And also make sure you get your stock from reputable breeders. Don't go to the cheapest guy on the road. Don't necessarily buy from a tank full of mixed guppies in your local fish store. In fact, definitely don't do that because you don't know what strains are mixed together there. Make sure that the fish you buy are healthy. Make sure they come from reputable sources. In terms of a breeding tank, you want to make sure that there's a minimum of 40 liters. Uh, use the sponge filter because that is just safer for fry. Give the guppy fry places to hide once they're born. Uh, use plants such as java moss or guppy grass. Keep your temperature at between 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. And use moderate lighting and don't stress the fish with light. In terms of feeding your baby fry, you can use crushed uh, fish food flakes, micro worms, baby brine shrimp or similar. Once the baby fish arrive, your job shifts to observation and selection. And this is where the science of line breeding becomes a little bit more interesting. You could use something called a pellet square, and I will, um, I will put an example of this onto the artificial blog. Um, I will make sure there's uh, an article about this with some examples. These are tools that geneticists and um, yeah, even aquarists use to predict the outcomes of a breeding pair. It's basically a chart that shows all the possible combinations of parental genes. But for example, if both parents carry the albino gene, but don't show it, there's a 25% chance that their fry will be albino. If one parent has a dominant snake skin gene, the chance increases that their fry will inherit it. So draw a simple two by two grid, put one parent's genes on the top, the others on the side, and fill in the possible pairings. It's actually quite fun once you get the hang of it. You can also track fry generations on a spreadsheet or on a, a notebook, log the age of the fish, the growth rate, the colors, the trays. The more detailed your notes are, the better you can select your next breeders. Obviously, if you're not taking this as a very serious breeding project, you simply want to play around with some colors. Maybe not necessary to keep detailed notes, but still interesting nonetheless. Now you can do all of this and things can still go a bit sideways. One of the things that people are going to ask is, well, you know, I've got these lovely guppies, but they're just not breeding. Why not? It may be that your guppies are not yet sexually mature. That only hits it around three months. So don't be in a hurry. The water temperatures might be too low. You've got to raise it to about 26 to 27 degrees Celsius. If your uh, tank is overcrowded or there's poor water, water quality, that can also um, suppress breeding behavior. Some people find that their baby fry don't survive. And that could be also from a couple of things such as an ammonia or nitrate level spike. Just make sure that you check your water parameters. Um, are you feeding the fry enough? You know, are you feeding them often enough? They're tiny, they need high protein food three to four times a day. Do they have spaces and places to hide? Because in some guppy strains are actually worse at this than others. But if there's no cover, tiny little guppy fry make great easy snacks for hungry parents. Sometimes you'll find that over time, a guppy strain may look a bit less vibrant, may look less colorful. Well, there are a couple of things here. You might need to outcross with another line, so that you refresh the genetics. You also want to be selective when you're choosing your breeding guppies. Only breed your brightest and your healthiest fish. And then a very basic thing, it may just be that their poor color stems from poor nutrition. So add spirulina, add high protein foods, add a variety of foods. Some people also ask, um, is it okay to keep fried adults in the same tank? Well, that's actually a great question. I spoke just now about babies becoming great snacks. But there's another um, reason here as well that you want to separate them once they reach about four weeks. Because at that age, the males start developing their gonopodium, that's their reproductive fin, and they will all start chasing the females. And keeping them together can lead to early uncontrolled breeding, which will mess with your planned pairings and may lead to lower quality baby fish. So if you're just starting out with this, 
There are a couple of strains I'm going to suggest for that are hardy, that breed to, and quite frankly, I'll just drop dead gorgeous. The first one is the Albino Full Red. That's high contrast, it's vibrant, and it's quite easy to track the recessive traits. Then you have the Endler Guppy Hybrid. These are smaller fish, they're very energetic, they've got loads of colour. You might also want to look at the half black yellow guppies. They're quite easy to breed and they're very consistent in their tail shape. And then you have something called a blue topaz, which is basically a metallic blue. They tend to have strong immune systems and very reliable genetics. You want to make sure that you avoid some of the fancier sounding um, big strains, such as galaxy snake skin hybrids or something similar. They may be absolutely stunning, but they can be unpredictable if you're trying to um, breed a specific strain and uh, you may be disappointed over time. You will learn more and you'll get better results when you start simple. So there we have it. That is a simple breakdown of guppy genetics that hopefully you have found useful. If this episode helped to clarify things or got you excited to start your own breeding project, please leave a comment, leave a review and share it with a fellow aquarist. Until we meet again on the next episode, keep learning, keep discovering and keep enjoying this amazing hobby. Bye for now. That's it for this episode of The Aquarist Sedge. Please consider subscribing to this podcast so that you don't miss further episodes. We would love it if you would also rate and review the podcast as this helps make it visible to others. Until next time, keep learning and discovering and keep finding your Aquarist Sedge in this captivating and fascinating hobby.